Hi. So let's talk about coding an animated star field. Um, what we have here already is a simple star field that's not animated. And I want to try to start from there and animate this. So using P5.js, we have set up our canvas and uh, the color mode. Um, I've defined the midpoint, which I think I'll use later in this star field uh, creation method. So it creates star field, comes up here and I set the number of stars. I could change that to um, 3000, save it. And now we have 3000 stars or just 30 stars. Boring. Okay, um, let's make it 500 stars. Um, I'm creating another canvas because I want to put all the stars on one canvas. I could uh, as easily just put everything on the regular canvas. In fact, I think that's a better idea to um, just simplify things. Instead of creating another canvas, I'll just remove that extra canvas like so. And I don't need this image anymore because it'll already be drawn to the canvas. And if I save it, it looks the same, only the stars changed their position because I randomly generated them again. But now we don't have an extra canvas. I like that because it's simpler. All right, so this cannot animate, unfortunately. So instead, we're going to do something that looks like this, okay? Where it appears that we are flying through the stars. And as they fly past our point of view, they sort of reappear in the distance and we fly towards them again. So it's kind of an endless journey through stars. Okay, that's the goal. Um, and we're gonna start now, right here. So to start with, I want to change the create star field method. It, this could easily be called just draw star field method because that's what we're doing in here we're we're setting the fill and by the way the i'm setting a random hue for each one of these so if i did pump up the saturation you'd see uh, it's a little hard to see let's make those those bigger like at least five and seven so all of these dots have a random color now but what i did for the star field is just drop the saturation down so they're all white um so I'm just drawing them each time. So let's change that. So instead of just drawing them each time, we'll just, we'll create all the stars and they'll all have their own position and size and stuff like that. And then in our draw method, we'll redraw each star in an updated position each time. So let's do that. First thing I want to do is to have this create star field method return a value, in this case, an array of all the stars. And I'm going to assign that to a variable. Okay. Return array. So that doesn't change anything right now, but this const stars. So let's make that a let and unbreak it. Good. Now, instead of drawing inside of this loop, instead of drawing everything, let's just create it and push it into our array. So I'm going to say array.push. So it's me from the future. Just wanted to tell you I made an error. I went down a path that was not correct and I've edited that out. But while I was going down that path, I added some code that I will continue to use. Pause here, this render function with a circle uh, call in it, and this one line inside of the draw function. Add those bits in and we'll all be in the same place. Thanks get star object like that and I could define the get star object right here function get star object and right now I'm not passing it anything function okay um, but I'd like to pass it 
n, like a num a number. Um, I'm going to define this render method and it's dot inside, and this pause as well gets defined inside. Now those got those have an individual scope, so to speak. Uh, like so. Okay. And I'm going to return from this get star object method an object which has one property of a, a, a render method. Boom. Let's let's uh, shrink those down. Okay, we have a star field again. Um, it's kind of boring, but um, what's significant to note is that instead of w rendering once, now I'm rendering as many times per second as the browser can, maybe up to 30 or whatever. If I had a frame rate counter, I could see that, but I'm rendering again and again and again and again with this draw method. Um, but the, the objects are not changing position. The stars are not moving. Let's Let's change that. So inside of the inside of my get star object its render method I'm gonna run an update method which I will define I'm, I'm, I'm calling it underscore update as kind of a clue to my future self and anyone else reading this code that that is a private method um, and inside of this I'm going to just pick a new random position which is super obnoxious. I'm not going to do that. Instead, let's just say pause.x plus equals um, rate. Oh, rate. And let's define rate inside of the star object as just another property. Um, const rate equals um, random, so between 1 and 4. Okay? So now, Eee! All the stars are moving, and they're drawing these white lines. Some are kind of dashed, and some are solid. Some are moving fast, some are moving slow. I'm going to hit Escape to pause it. Why are we seeing lines instead of just the stars moving? Because P5 is just drawing; it's not erasing. So let's let's call it clear command, and now the stars just move. And obviously, that would work for the y-axis too. Or if we wanted them to go up. Okay, but we want them to come toward the camera. Um, to get that to happen, we need to change a couple of things that are pretty important. And those are the renderer. We need to make it a 3D renderer. We can do that by just typing in WebGL here. Now we have a 3D renderer. And if I save, uh, you'll see that the stars now are scooched down to this bottom right-hand corner. And that's because of the way the WebGL renderer works. Um, we need to change the positioning a bit. So I'm going to define a property. Actually, I'm not going to define it. I'll just set it up here. We need to. Um, the WebGL renderer works by starting in the middle of the screen, whereas the 2D renderer starts in the upper left-hand corner. So we can just redefine our, our boundaries here as between halfway off this, halfway uh, the width of the screen and the width, half width of the screen. <laughs> that's a hard, that's a mouthful. I think you can read what I'm trying to say better than what I'm saying. So negative window width times 0 0.5 and negative window height times 0 0.5 and that should recenter our stuff now that we're in we're using 3d positioning we probably want to give it a z position as well and um, we'll call that random uh, negative 100 negative 100 meaning further back into the distance and 100 meaning towards the virtual camera Okay, and that doesn't change anything. We want to, if we want things to move forward, like if I change the Z like this, look, the stars don't seem to move at all. In fact, I see no animation now. And that's because circle draws a 2D shape. 
and even if I try to add like the Z position all I'm doing is updating the, um, the diameter of the circle so instead we need to use a sphere um, and a sphere does not take a position um, it takes uh, a couple of things it takes uh, a diameter and it takes um, sorry a diameter and resolution X and, and Y I'm not saying that right but I, I hope that's that makes some some sense let's just see real quick p5 okay so if I go to shape 3d shapes sphere it takes the radius and then the detail X detail Y um, we want the radius to be consistent let's just say 5 and I'll leave detail X and detail Y alone for now and here's the thing if we want to get it to, to, to move here let me just save this and we have one sphere right in the middle actually there's 500 spheres right in the middle if we want those to be positioned differently we need to translate them okay but there's a problem with this too see how there's some crazy I mean there's something working um, but we need to kind of reset the transformations each time and the way to do that is to use this pop command I'm oh, sorry push rather start with push and pop and the nice thing about this is it isolates our commands each time so they only affect that one time I'm having problems with the autocomplete here look at that so now our stars are flying towards us um, I don't like the radius of the sphere it's a little bit too wide that's still a little too wide let's go with one isn't that nice okay that's all I have time for now um, some other fun things we could do with this is to modify the brightness so that it's further back it's darker and it's closer to our viewpoint then it's brighter to kind of simulate that that um, that brightness of the star and um, we could wish I had time to do that I'll do it next time but yeah that's how to animate a star field from 2d to 3d hope you enjoyed this see you soon